Good evening. It is seven o'clock. We have a quorum. Uh, Mr. Maximoski is not with us tonight, so we will launch into our walk-in agenda. Uh, Valerie Miller. Good evening. I'm Valerie Miller with SWCA. I'm here on behalf of Nexamp, who installed the solar project site on Gateway. Um, it's north and south. Yeah, it's Hadley 3 North, Hadley 3 South is what it's called. And what they'd like to do is now um, add a battery storage to it, to the system. So I brought in the original plans and I also am providing with a new set of plans just showing you where the battery storage will go. So these two plans were from the original um, Poles, and the highlighted yellow is where the inverter for the current system goes. And on these plans that I provided you with, I highlighted the battery storage, which is right next to the inverter. So on both of the, the two pages, one showing north and one showing shelves, it shows you where the, um, the battery would be installed. So the battery storage, um, unit is, is 35 feet long, it's 11 or so feet wide and 11 feet high and it will just be installed next to the inverter. Um, What's it made out of? It is a lithium, I have that Heavy in Heavy metal? It's a lithium ion phos, it's in your package, <laughs> I can't get it out. <laughs> It's a lithium ion phosphate battery is what they're using. Oh, right. So um, so the system itself, I, I don't know if you know what they look like, but they look like storage facilities or sort of cargo facilities that you'd see um, like offloading and the batteries are inside. So let me see if I have a good picture for you. So it would look like this. Uh, this, this is the inverter. This, that page shows you the inverter that would go with the battery storage. The battery itself looks like this, and it's um, made by Con Edison. These are the electrical line diagrams that would go with it. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm the new guy. Okay. So I'm, yep, trying yep. To, I'm trying to place where this is in town. Um, it is behind Target. Okay. In that those fields out there, so it's owned by you're, Allard's. If you're back by the the yeah. dairy store, mm -hmm. right? It's okay. Yeah, it's off of Westgate Center Drive. So you'd have to go out to Fish and Wildlife right. to the roundabout right. there, mm -hmm. and maybe you could see it through the. Okay. Who wrote this? That came from Nextera. But did an engineer write it? Or? Yeah, that came from their, their things, and they gave that to the fire They should always date it and let us know who created it. Well, you know? I, I, I probably I mean, shouldn't I, have even put it in there. Because, you know, it's, 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 it, it says it's got a very low risk of thermal runaway. Well, my question would be, well, what is that risk? Did they quantify it or did they just okay, throw I'll that out? Oh, no, it's here. It's public record now. No, no, I don't mind. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying you know, I can... They make a statement like that and back it up with something. Well, we, we went to the fire department <laughs> yeah. and we talked to them. Basically, that was written for the fire department so that they knew what type of battery was being, was being used out there. Um, the... Fire Department, uh, Michael Spanknebel has given a letter. He's okay with the system. He understands how it operates. He understands the potential fire or not hazard with it. And the only thing that they requested to be added to the system was a standpipe um, so that if it was on fire, they could actually just hook up to the system and put water into the box, the container itself. So. The system itself has its own fire suppressant, sort of like, it, it, it's not obviously water, it's just, I forgot, I forgot my word, uh, oh, deluge, it's sort of a dry yeah. deluge. So Like it, a baking powder or something? Yeah, it's sort <laughs> of like a... And we yeah, all know, yeah. Mike, that lithium batteries don't catch on fire, even in airplanes, um, like the Dreamliner. You know, I'm just curious, who prepared this? Yeah. You know, I, I'm sorry. It, yeah, it, seems I, like, it seems almost like a marketing piece, rather than a. Uh, a, 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 a 
Well, I think I just use it to sort of explain the difference for, between batteries that are out there and the battery that we're using. So that's that's my mistake. You know who provided it for you? Yep, the uh, engineer for Nexam provided it to me, Robert Sheep. So Tell me you should I can, always date it and put his name on it if you please. So that's what and we're I asking for. Actually, get it updated if you'd like for the yeah. record. Yeah, I would like that. Okay, so Just I'll ask him to do that. No. So you're looking for a correction, Valerie, for the installation of the lithium right. batteries in both sites. Yep, and just asking if. If providing this information now or anything else you need is is okay, or would you like to open it up and do I need to go through a formal public hearing or just trying to understand the process and what you'd like? Um, they designed it so it wouldn't be within in, within any of the resource areas either. Um, Janice has looked at it at conservation, and she's okay with the placement of it. She hasn't provided a letter, but we did go before the Conservation Commission and they said it, it did not need additional permitting. It's certainly bigger than an accessory apartment. Mm -hmm. Accessory apartment? Yeah. Uh, uh, 35 by 11? Yep, 35 feet long. Mm -hmm. So, uh, considering its location, considering the degree of disturbance already in place. Um, I think this is a relatively minor component. So I'd make a motion to amend site plan approval to allow battery storage installation at both sites as shown on the plans. Second. Do we need, is it within our purview to, as Mike said, ask for more safety or uh, Explanations of the, um, the risks of the... Frankly, if they've satisfied the fire chief, I don't know how much more input yeah, we right. have. Right. That's C correct, but you know, when you make a statement and you say there's a low probability, well, my question is, what does he think a low probability is? 20%, 10%? I think the author is getting a C minus on his essay. Yeah. <laughs> so in the future, and I think this is going to have to be a policy of this board. I'm speaking for myself, but I think other people agree. That whoever prepares a document has to sign it and date it mm -hmm. so we know who it came from, what his position is with the company, and uh, when it was created. Sure. And, and I think it's really actually on me. I, I actually just hold it from my records and my discussions uh -huh. and how I describe the batteries to people. So I had I'd received it from the engineer and I should have just had him sign it. Okay. <clears throat> and dated. And I can ask them to get that information signed and dated if you'd like. And I can just uh, drop it off. <clears throat> yeah. Just not, not to draw the analogy too quickly, but I'm sure somebody at Boeing created something like this. Yeah, it's okay. Well, I didn't mean so, for it to, I, I, to go I, I, that route. Right. I, I really, I, I understand, understand where you're coming from. I, I was really yeah, just so, trying to explain yeah, the difference you, in the battery. I got you. And, and the size and the ability of well, each of the different batteries is really where I was trying yeah, to provide yeah, for well. you. Because it's hard yeah. to explain the different batteries. Um, well, we can understand them. We can read yeah. We can read That's not an issue. It's more of a question. No, I, I, we're, we're not, we're we're not, my, we're not my welcome. Huh? It says the failure rate of a tier one quality produced lithium ion battery in general is better than one in 10 million. That's pretty good. That's um, pretty good odds. Yeah. Okay. Up there with the lottery. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's a motion made and seconded to amend site plan approval. Is there any more discussion? Seeing none, okay. all in favor? Aye. 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 So, four, zero, one absent. Anything else you need then? Uh, you no, know, we'll get something written up. Okay. Uh, but um, we can also just, if the building inspector needs yep. any clarification, you can just sure. call us. And we still have to work with the fire department because we need to train, do the training with yep. them and, and go over the system. And training on the entire solar system hasn't been done yet either. So, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Andrew Bass. Good evening, I'm attorney Andrew Bass and I'm here from Bird Hume Construction LLC. Um, we're looking to get some more lots released up in North Hadley in the uh, Sapphire State Subdivision. Um, one of them's sold, one of them's already built. There's already a house there. I'll give you um, copies of the ones we're looking for. So the highlighted in pink, there's four lots we're looking to get released. Um, which definitely still leaves um, quite a few on the left for security. Um, under the Form D covenant that was uh, from 2008 with the planning board. So, so you, we've done how many? Uh, uh, there's six that have been released six, so far. So this will be. And how many are there? All eighteen. They're not. A, this this map was actually redrawn to include one more lot. So there's. Eight. So there'll be 18 left or eight or um, left. eight left? There'll be eight left. Eight left. So um, lots 10, 11, 12, and 13. And like I said, 13's already, it's closing. It was supposed to close today. It's going to close tomorrow probably. Um, 10 is already, there's already a house built on it. And then 12 is under construction and 11 is vacant. So what this exercise entails is that when, when we approved this subdivision back in 2015, the uh, developer agreed to something called a covenant as performance security. And the covenant says that um, the planning board has a claim on all of the lots unless and until the developer completes all of the infrastructure as shown on the plans. And theoretically, if the developer went, disappeared, <coughs> we could uh, basically foreclose on a lot and use the proceeds to pay to finish the road or something. <coughs> it's one of three performance security options that and the cho choice of the, op of the option is up to the developer, but this is the least expensive. Then there are cash bonds and um, bank letters of credit that are also can be used in lieu of the, the lien, but um, this doesn't have any upfront cost, so mm -hmm. it is what most subdevision developers do. And, and some developers have disappeared. Okay. Historically in town. So we, we have a couple of situations, not involving this street. No. Uh, this developer is always happy to have the town take the roads off of his hands. So he doesn't <clears throat> hold things up. But there are a couple of streets that uh, the developer, um, as soon as they sold off all the lots, they kind of vanished without tidying up loose ends, like having the road offered to the town meeting for acceptance. Mm -hmm. Um, in which they had to build it to our standards. Right. Well, the thing is that it was built to our standards, but then th there are some legal questions about who had authority to transfer the property. Um, so this is not, th those, there are some problems on Bayberry Lane, for example, but that does not affect this development. So we've just sort of reached a tipping point. There, um, they've We've released a third of the lots previously. Um, this will bring it up to 10 out of 18. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we still have more than adequate security. Um, the assessors, by and large, and I don't know if, if they have, that probably these have a more of a premium, but do you happen to know what the assessed value of the unbuilt lots are? Um, not off the top of my head, but I'd imagine, you know, they're, just, they're obviously between 150, 250,000 each. Right. The, a, a generic buildable box off of Shattuck Road uh, is assessed for about $130,000. So, and, and these, 
any subdivision with amenities would be higher. So, um, you know, call it 800,000. We, we have enough security to build the subdivision if we had to, but I don't think that would be an issue. Yeah, he's looking just to finish that cul-de-sac off on Nikki's way, so that's why we're getting those. He's going to yeah, finish off that cul-de-sac, and then um, the only thing left to do is a top coat on the road, really. Yeah, so. hey, I was going to ask what's, what to currently build on this left. Yeah, so I mean, um, you know, he's obviously he's going to wait to do the top coat until all the houses are done so that the road surface is pristine right. for everyone once, yeah. um, once all the houses are done. Um, but yeah, there's still quite a few lots left that are um, vacant. Generally, Mike, they wait for the top coat to go on after most of the houses are in because construction equipment would equipment, right. tear it up a little bit. Right. That's reasonable. Okay, I'll make a motion to release lots 10, 11, 12, and 13 as shown on Plan Book 244, page 104. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, very good. And do you have a form for yes, us? I do. Any idea how many people live up uh, in these de development in North Hadley? Berkham Developments, parking lot? Um, well, how many yeah. people live there? Yeah, Falls Park. Oh, like of, of all the ones yeah, he's built? Yeah, all the ones up there. Probably most, <laughs> most of the subdivisions in Hadley. <laughs> But how, how many live up in North Hadley? How many? How, many, how much population has been added to North Hadley through these developments? Any idea? Maybe like twenty people. <laughs> no. Well, um, let's see. Well, people? there's some families, you know, um, some of them come and go during the summer, but lots of professors and maybe a hundred people. Okay. okay. Here's the bigger: two point three kids per household. Way back when. The demographics have changed and they've slumped a little bit. So, uh, plus, a few of those people in that area might send their kids to prep school. Yeah, definitely. Most of them actually. I live in on the street too. Yeah, free <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, most of them go to these prep schools up there and they take off for the summer. So, yeah. you don't really see them. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. Could you get us a copy of that after it's been recorded? Absolutely. Thank you. Is there an um, email address? Uh, yep, yeah, planning at Hadley MA. It's, at, okay. it's on the website. All right, very good. Thank you. Okay. This was another copy of the letter from Mike Beckley while I was in our box. Um, Is that the one we just? Yes, the, the one that was in the, in the package. Um, uh, I think those were in our box, so I'm just going to leave them for Jim. And we don't have any public hearings scheduled for tonight. Um, I had made a proposal to um, change the meeting time uh, from 7 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. with public hearings starting at 6.45 instead of at 7.15. Um, does anyone have any, been thinking about that at all? Any? I'm on board with that. I'm kind of ambivalent, really. I, I, I had to change around my schedule to accommodate the 6.30 and 7 work because I could be someplace in here, but I can do that. Um, so I've been just working through and staying at the office and so coming you, over. So you don't have a problem with 7 or do you? With 6.30, I, I, I'd rather do 6.30 okay. and okay. just get... That's fine. Uh, That's fine. You get up at the office quicker. Get out of the office. Well, <laughs> yeah. No, at the time that when we initially started this, every board was meeting at 7. Yeah. And I know the select board has moved to 6.30. Um, I know also at the time Jim was working out of town. Um, 
you had afternoon patients. Yep. Um, um, no problem with it. Okay, well, I'll make a motion. Starting next meeting? Yes. At 6.45. Effective 8.20. And thereafter. I would second that. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Joe was okay with that, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. I think Joe's comment that it, well, why were we doing this? Because it's five minutes at 10. <laughs> yeah. It's a selling point. Um, I don't know. I left on uh, any, if anybody has anything more to say about the uh, Route 9 design changes. Um, I did send everyone a link. I don't know if you chose to download it for the um, the detailed drawings. Um, do they have another scheduled presentation? Uh, they, go out to bid? they are, yes, I think they have a 75% design hearing. Uh, but at that point, it's uh, really hard to Change. turn the ship around. Right. Um, the uh, there will be a presentation to the Amherst Chamber of Commerce uh, in early September, and I had a, saw an email from Molly Keegan on that when the agenda went out. On, I think she might have said the 12th, but the idea is to uh, try to get the word out so that people can. Um, uh, be a, be more aware of this. And that uh, Amherst Chamber is what, what, when's that scheduled? I, it, I don't. Okay. Early September. Early September. I think it might have been the twelfth or something like that, but I don't. I'm not sure. Uh, that's a Thursday night. It might or might not be the twelfth, but there is something planned for a more formal presentation, similar to the 25 percent design hearing, but to try to reach more people. Um, let's see. Um, Pine Valley Planning Commission, uh, they're going to come at our next meeting. Planning Board Procedures, um, I think uh, uh, got to save this for Jim. Uh, Jim and I had some input on there was a gathering of um, fire department, police department, building inspector, town administrator to try to figure out ways to streamline the actual development process. Because once it leaves us, no one's put a shovel in the dirt yet. Uh, it's when that's when it starts getting messy when people start doing things out of sequence. Um, there are. Um, there's a comment here that I had specifically says, upon issuance of the site plan approval, the planning board shall incorporate or append each department's recommendations in the final decision. And I had said that there are reasons why that doesn't make it a lot of sense. It just clutters up our decision because the appeal from a planning board decision is different than the appeal route from a conservation commission decision. So I'm trying to keep them separate, but. We'll take that up at our next meeting. Part of it, part of the problem is when we do give the plans for the police chief and various boards, the DPW, to review the plans and comment on it, they don't review it and they don't comment, yet they want to make changes once the construction begins. So as board members, we have to probably be cognizant of the fact that well, is the note from the fire chief there, yes or no? It's, some note should be there, yes, it's acceptable, no, it isn't. DPW, the various yeah. boards. Well, the thing is, the, what the bylaw says is, if we don't hear back, that is assumed. So, the other part of it is that we don't have any jurisdiction over some of these changes. No, I... I so, if, if we 
say, okay, to put the fire hydrant there, and the fire chief says no, um, the fact that he didn't mention it at our review period doesn't really matter. Uh, I mean, well, it's his call. But then he blames the system, and I'm saying it's their fault because they haven't reviewed it. For example, the turning radius where the dentist went in, in old Stan the Vegetable Man, the radius wasn't significant enough for a fire truck to go in, according to the new fire regulations. Well, the driveway was already in, and then he wanted them to change it. So what That he... should have been noticed before, and so that's, that's all I'm saying, is that we should be aware as a board but, that... But he's not an engineer, he's a fire chief. But he has, he knows what a uh, length of driveway should be and he, what his truck can get. He shouldn't ask him to change it once it's no, all. No, no. So, in other words, kind of a checklist in our mind, you know. Uh, well, no, no, not in our mind. If you want to draw up a checklist, we'll, we can, you put something together, we'll take a look at it and uh, so if we need a checklist, we need a written checklist that we can share with other people. Um, I, 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 as, as acting chair, I'm delegating checklist preparation to you. I don't think that's a bad idea. No, just write down the, the, the same, you know, if, if it's something, I, I've, I've tried to do it and I've never really gotten all that far with it, but a lot of what we tell people at the beginning of every, every time someone applies, we really should have it written down um, somewhere. But um, um, checklists. I'll just put down that you suggested that. And You'll put something together. I will. Okay. Uh, this calls for the chairman's signature anyway, so we'll put that off to our next meeting. Um, we don't have any bills or correspondence. Uh, I don't know if there are any future discussion topics that we should be... Do, uh, should I update on the, my adventures as an alternate to the PD. Sure. So I went as the alternate to the first um, election uh, voting meeting, and as you, I think, know by now that we voted by um, secret, ballot. secret ballot, and there was a protest. So then we, they rescheduled another one. We did an open, uh, uh, open vote. But between those two, the second candidate um, withdrew his, his name. So it was basically just an affirmation process. And so uh, now I think they're in the process of negotiating salary and terms. Do they give a range of salary so when somebody applies, you know, they can accept or reject it? I thought it was going to be more money. I think I heard it offhand, but I don't remember seeing it in writing. Okay. So. Um, yeah, moving from Nevada could be, I want you to move me and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right. So I didn't you know the highest paid public official in Hampshire County was? Well, it used to be the, the basketball coach when Derek Keller was. Oh, I'm was talking there. just yeah. in Hampshire County. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, executive director of the Hampshire Council Governments. Oh, aren't they going away? It's you COT? Got, you got it. Yeah. Um, and then the latest on the PVP, uh, PVPC process was that uh, this afternoon, I think Bill probably saw it too, they released uh, to all of us commissioners and alternates a uh, copy of what they sent in response to the lawsuit about their open meeting violation and they spelled out how we didn't mean to do it 
And so we've taken corrective steps and we've gone through the proper process. So hopefully that's resolved for them. So that's all the news I have. Thanks for the update. So I've added a line for executive session for the uh, appeal of the uh, allowance of the exotic auto North Hadley site. Um, I don't think we have any, I, I just want to have that on the agenda so we will have the op opportunity to go into executive session if we so choose. Um, there is nothing that I am aware of that requires executive session um, and certainly nothing that would have a detrimental effect on our litigating position. Um, I believe, uh, oh, I know town council has filed an appearance on behalf of the town, but the, um, um, the applicant, uh, Exotic Autos, has hired a lawyer to defend. Um, they hired Michael Pell. And um, we'll just see how that plays out. So he's going to defend him in the appeal. Could he? I'm not, I don't want to ask you that. <laughs> um, I have nothing else. Came, you came on a boring night, man. Usually there's fireworks here. Yeah. <laughs> At our next meeting, uh, normally uh, the first Tuesday of the month, we do meet with our um, uh, contact with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to discuss planning issues as opposed to permitting issues. Uh, because Jim is out, uh, because Jim has been working with PVPC on uh, a couple of things, like especially MS4. Um, seemed to be best if Pioneer Valley Planning Commission came to our next meeting. We have no public hearing scheduled for the next meeting. And um, I guess this is sort of a seasonal thing. The, um, we're, uh, we're pretty much out of projects in the pipeline at this point. Which is actually to be expected because if you are just starting your permitting in August, you're not going to meet the end of the, you won't get started before the end of the construction season. And the people who are looking to be in the ground when the construction season begins in, what, April? March, April? Um, We'll probably see, start seeing them in September, October, November. Bill, but on, the, on the reconfiguration of Route 9, we're, we're going to have a limited amount of input into that? Uh, we have no official input into yeah. it. We have as much, um, you know, you certainly can make as many comments as you want. Um, they, uh, Jim had said that the feedback he got was the comments at the 25% design hearing were very useful because they went to specific uh, features of well, you know, that no, the, the land is not going to drain as well as you are expecting it to drain. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but there there will be no votes taken by this board right. on the Route Nine design and. To the extent the select board may choose to take a vote, um, I don't think that has any binding effect on the um, on Route Nine design. But um, they they speak for the town more than we do because of our limited jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, I have nothing else. Nothing. Motion to adjourn. Second. As Jim said, the meeting is history. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. And 7.30, record 7.34. Yeah.